hi everyone i assume we're live now so welcome to our fourth parenting hub um yeah i'm ben o'shea i work for young somerset and this is ruth, ruth. gavinlock and i'm a well-being practitioner at young somerset as well exactly um so yeah this is our fourth parenting hub which is our virtual hubs which we we stream once a week on a monday on facebook live um and it's just a an open space to have a general conversation about a different topic every week. Um, we welcome comments um, and questions from people. So if you want to put anything in the comments, then feel free. Um, we'll try and answer them as and when um, we get to it, it during the session. Um, we do like to have just kind of like general questions rather than specifics about young people or people you know, just to kind of yeah protect the identity of people. So if it is a question, it's more general. Um, but saying that, if you want to have more of an in-depth chat with one of our wellbeing practitioners um, about more specific issues and get some advice, then um, Sam's available on our fancier chat service this week. Um, and the number is 07483 Um Yeah, and Sam's available for our fancy the chat service this week. So yeah, and I think we're going to post the number in the comments below. So yeah, yeah, yeah. if you didn't catch that, it will be posted below in a minute, I assume. Um, so yeah, this week's hub, like I say, general chat conversation, and this week's topic is um, talking about kind of internet safety um, and social media. So Again, it's just a general chat regarding parents um, and we do a, a, another virtual hub for young people, which is over on Instagram, which is at YS Wellbeing. Um, and that's a kind of more, yeah, it's a virtual hub directed more for young people. So if you are a young person and you want kind of more accessible young people advice, then go over to the Instagram live. Um, so Ruth, yeah, let's, should we get started? And I was going to say that um, if, anybody wants to see any of the previous um, presentations that they can go to our website and they're on there I believe yeah and they're also on our Facebook page so yeah if you if you navigate towards our Facebook page yeah. you'll be yeah you'll be able to see them all in and um, we are in the process as well of kind of uploading them all to YouTube so that will be happening very soon so they'll be yeah. readily available um, at all time so yeah um, what we normally do at our hubs is we share some slides to kind of talk the conversation through. So, um, me and I'll just share these now, um, so that me and Ruth can, yeah, start our conversation almost. Can you see that? Do I need to go full screen? Yeah, I can see that. Cool. Um, right. I just need to make it bigger for myself. I think. There we go. Cool. I had real de technical difficulties with this last week, so um, yeah. Hopefully, we run a bit smoother this week. <laughs> um okay so we always open up kind of talking about some facts and figures looking at kind of yeah some interesting kind of research that's around so this week i think the first one we've got is um teenagers who spend more than three hours a day on social media may have double the risk of mental health problems as those who don't the study of more than six thousand children aged 12 to 15 found those who use social media more heavily were more likely to report issues such as depression, anxiety, and loneliness, as well as aggression and antisocial behavior than teenagers who did not use social media. So, and that research was conducted by Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health in Maryland. There, Johns Hopkins, yeah, it's a really kind of highly regarded medical school, isn't it, Ruth, in America, yeah. I believe. And I think as well, um, kind of some of the research I was doing kind of flipped that round as well. Yeah. And that young people who are lonely and isolated are more likely to kind of be on social media and be vulnerable yeah. to um you know being groomed or well, yeah because that's the other fact there isn't it it's the one in five children groomed online or under 12 and more than 70 yeah. percent reported grooming took place on main social media platforms such as facebook instagram whatsapp and snapchat so yeah kid children who are online are naturally going to be more susceptible to yeah but children as well who, you know, don't have many friends or who, um, you know, feel quite isolated, mm. they are more vulnerable as well. Is what Definitely. I yeah. And I think it's, it, well, you can't kind of escape social media and phones nowadays. So it's, yeah, it's kind of it's something all young people really inter interact with. And, you know, it's a very relevant subject, isn't it? And I think that final... Um, little piece of research there said that over 50% of 
12 year olds yeah have a social media presence that's right yeah so i mean i would imagine that you know most young people have a phone or access to um the internet yeah um but 50 percent have actually have a, an online social media profile yeah i'm just going to go to the next slide hopefully yep. i can get this done now okay so i think obviously there's a lot of problems that social media and young people being online um can cause and i think some of them are kind of well documented in the media especially and you know different cases but um for parents it can be quite difficult sometimes to spot when there might be a problem because children may be just kind of you know stuck on their phone and these things may not be apparent and obvious to what's going on on the online world so well it's I quite we'll... normal isn't it for a <clears throat> teenager to be kind of glued to their yeah. social media and i think a lot of adults as well i mean yeah, it's absolutely. not just you know i know we're talking about young people but i think yeah i mean everyone yeah it's, it's you know it's quite common nowadays to see people stuck on their phone for hours at a time can't you so yeah and i think that's yeah. one of the things i was when i was kind of doing some research into this mm. is about um you know parents setting a good example as well yeah by, definitely by putting their phone down um, yeah you know and not spending all their time online definitely um so yeah well the first one well the first way to spot problems we've got here is your teenager spends a lot more or a lot less time than usual online texting gambling gaming or using social media so i guess it's just identifying recognizing when young people are maybe spending too much time on their phone yeah yeah the next one is about if they seem distant upset or angry after using the internet or texting so that's you know um if they're being exposed to things that make yeah. them feel uncomfortable or they're being bullied or they're being asked to do things um, that they're not happy with or they feel yeah. embarrassed about then you know they may not tell you but that's the kind of reaction that, that it'll cause so yeah and it's a kind of a normal reaction it. isn't it i suppose for anyone yeah. kind of yeah who's experienced something negative online or you know it, it will have that immediate kind of effect on you afterwards as well so yeah, yeah. it's kind of a, a good sign to watch out for and the third one there is become secretive about who they're talking to and what they're doing online or on their mobile phone. Um, they do not allow you to look at their phone and refuse to give you passwords. So I think that's a kind of really big red flag warning that, you know, if, if they are engaging in unsafe behaviour or, you know, they, they know that, I don't know, parents are going to not be happy with what the content is, then yeah. it's kind of, you'll get those, that kind of resistance to kind of any sharing of information, wouldn't you? And the last one there is, you know, if, if they've suddenly got lots of new phone numbers or they're getting yeah. a lot of texts or email addresses on their mobile phone that, um, you know, are unfamiliar. Yeah. Um, you usually know who your um, children's friends are. Yeah. So you suddenly start seeing a lot of um, phone numbers that, you know, don't belong to, to people that you know. Then that's mm. a bit of a red flag. I mean, do we want to say a little bit about the kinds of things that that young people might be accessing that would, you know, would not be a good thing? Yeah. Sorry, I missed. I think that lagged a little bit there, Ruth. Oh, I sorry. missed the middle part. Um, that's all right. It's my fault entirely. I was <laughs> well, saying, did, did, we, did we want to kind of mention some of the things that? We, you know we might as parents be worried about that our young people are accessing online yeah um, definitely so i think um being you know talking to adults obviously or other young people um yeah. who are asking them to do things that they're not comfortable with um online bullying and that can yeah. be either being the recipient of you know being bullied or, or the perpetrator being encouraged to join in Kind yeah of having a go at another young person and i think that's as well i mean the internet can be a, a, well a dangerous place especially if you're kind of interacting with the wrong kind of information as well i mean you kind of converting young people to extremist views you know really right wing ring, ring views and that kind of thing so i mean that is something that's prominent as well is that kind of yeah there's there's lots of kind of 
yeah, negative people, shall we say, online that, yeah. Like and, to... you know, if, if a young person's worried about their, their mental health, there's obviously mm. a lot of really good sites out there, but there are also some that are a bit more worrying. Yeah, um, definitely. In terms of self-harm or eating disorders, then, you know, there are, there are sites out there that are not healthy for young people to be looking at. Definitely. And yeah, and I think you've made an important point there. I think with this whole thing today, we're not saying that, you know, all Internet and all social media is a bad thing. There are lots of positives that that can come from these things. And actually, it's more about just kind of being aware. And, and if you notice that there are con changes in behavior or mood or things in, you know, there these could be warning signs. So, yeah, there are lots of positives, but there are, you know, a lot of incredibly difficult dangers out there, especially for, for young people in yeah, it, particularly vulnerable young people as well who could be, you know, susceptible to grooming and and that kind of thing. So, um, and I think it's and I think you know <coughs> the scary thing is it's it's very easy, isn't it? You know, you're yeah. two clicks away from seeing something, you know, some very nasty porn or, you know, some quite violent imagery. It's you know, it's not hard, is it, to find to find? Yeah, things, and I think so. that's one thing for me on a personal level. I've always kind of worried about with kind of children and growing up and things. So I think I I was of a generation that mobile phones and everything like that came about just kind of as, as I had finished school and it wasn't kind of around when I was younger. And yeah, the, the way that young people nowadays are, are able to access things and things that I never would have been able to access um, yeah. being a young person, you know, it really is completely different. I mean, I don't see myself as massively old yet. I'm only 35, but it's still, you know the difference from my age to kind of the teenagers that I work with nowadays it's it's scary that you know knowing the things they can have access to it the you know touch their fingers it's yeah it's, yeah it is quite quite scary it yeah. is definitely yeah. um I'm just going to see what we've got so yeah so we're going to talk about ways to spot problems so if you are worried about something and you're and you want you think there might be something wrong then they, we've got some tips here to kind of start a conversation and you know maybe talk to a young person about if you've got any concerns or I think, worries I think, I think as well ben i mean mm. even if you're not worried yeah um and your young person hasn't expressed any um you know worries mm. this is still a good conversation to have with them definitely because you never know when they might stumble across something or somebody shows them something that they feel really uncomfortable about. So I think it's it's a good conversation for any parent or carer to have. With the Definitely. Yeah, no, I completely agree, Ruth. Yeah, just being open about this kind of thing and having that regular conversation is, yeah, it's really helpful for young people. I think having that kind of open dialogue all the time is, yeah, it's massively important for young people to understand that they can go to someone if they do feel uncomfortable about something or, you know, maybe unsafe. Um, so I think the first one we've got there is talking to your child about what they're doing or sharing online can help, can help you to understand any risks and keep them safe. So I think with a lot of it as well is kind of parents taking their own initiative, finding out what kind of apps the young people are using and, and knowing what they're about as well. I think that's quite helpful in, you know, understanding what kind of things they're using. What is Instagram? What is TikTok? You know, it's developing that understanding. I mean, um, I, find hard, I find it hard to keep up with it all, Ben, because, yeah. you know, I feel like I've, I've got my head around what's going on. And then all of a sudden I hear people, you know, like TikTok, like, what's that? You know, so I think it's quite um, it's quite difficult to to keep on top of all the different changes, isn't that really? Oh, it really you know, is. Come along. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I haven't even engaged with TikTok yet because I just can't <laughs> get my head around it. So. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah there's other things so you talk regularly to your child as you would about their day at school this will help your child feel relaxed and actually, i think that's what we covered earlier it's just kind of that talk about you know normalizing it and talking about it openly is quite important um so reassure them that you're interested in things going on for them both offline and online and remember they'll be using the internet for homework as well as talking to friends so yeah i think that's another thing to remember is that young people that like we said earlier it's changed a lot the way people communicate nowadays and actually for young people a mobile phone is their way of talking to young other people in you know talking with your peers and, and your friends is massively important to 
for young people's mental health and actually you know use of phones shouldn't always be seen in a negative light and actually if young people are using phones and social media it is a way for them to stay connected to their peers so again it's not always a negative well yeah. i think it's it's totally unrealistic to um expect a young person to to not have you know i think you know sometimes parents will kind of take the phone away or yeah but what you know what is more helpful is to actually have those conversations with your young person so they understand the dangers themselves because they are going to have to use yeah the, you know social media basically for exactly for yeah for communication you know so it's much better to teach them how to use it safely than yeah. to remove it definitely yeah because like we say it, community the way people communicate especially young people it's changed massively over the past you know 25 years or so it's it really is you know completely different and actually this is the only outlet for young people to talk to their friends and it's the most comfortable way for them to do it so yeah i think parents need to be aware that if you're removing these things you're all also removing that ability for young people to have those conversations with their friends and, and talk to people so especially yeah. at the moment with um, definitely you know because obviously i think you know now things are getting relaxed a little bit now but you know for the last three months yeah we've all um, been having the same been, communication virtually yeah, haven't we? so exactly. yeah for yeah. sure so um yeah i think what's the next one get your child to show you what apps they use i think i mentioned that before actually yeah. kind of like understanding it a bit better and um, yeah and along that line is educate yourself um we it says that we have a list of resources at the end of this presentation um we don't actually have it on this presentation like tagged on but if you go to our website which is youngsomerset.org.uk um, we have a really comprehensive list of different resources as well. So there will be a few at the end of this presentation, but there's even more and there's a more extensive list if you see what I mean. So yeah. um, next, so well, there's a few more things here. So be open about anything you're worried about. So I think Ruth mentioned this earlier is like, yeah, really kind of being, you know, if you have got a concern, talk about it. You're, you know, you might be barking up the wrong tree or you might be onto something, but it's better to find out and, and kind of, yeah, not just ignore the issue sort of thing. Um, I think as well, something I'd say there, Ben, about, because mm. sometimes if you directly confront a young person, yeah, they might not be, um, you know, particularly open with you, but I think if you if you make if you depersonalize it so yeah. make it about like has one of your friends ever seen something that made them uncomfortable yeah you know um have you heard about what what sort of things do you think people might come across on the internet that they might or on social media that might make them feel uncomfortable Definitely. you know and if you depersonalize it like that they're yeah. more like to say well you know um yeah so and so did this in blah 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 and oh, yeah, i think it, yeah my friend might have seen this happening you know so they rather than them saying it's them and then you yeah. can have a conversation it's, it's a really about... good tip actually Ruth doing that yeah definitely yeah no I think that depersonalization like you say I think you're right like some young people can't be very receptive sometimes to you know approaching them about a subject especially if it feels like it's a personal attack on them maybe so yeah approaching it in kind of like different ways may be really helpful in kind of getting that conversation started so yeah yeah um yeah remind them it's okay to speak to you if you have any concerns you will not be angry again yeah really important young people will worry about talking to parents or other adults about stuff because of what consequences might happen in in reaction so yeah reassuring young people that you know you're not gonna yeah be angry with them for anything that's happened is yeah quite important um so well, asking oh, yeah. them about their online friends yeah um, and how they know who they are who that, that they are who they say they are i mean Definitely. we just know that there's a lot of not just adults but older young people who mm. are going to try and manipulate definitely so, and i think that's one of the things that's covered quite a lot really like that kind of catfishing and pretending you're someone else online it's is knowing yeah. who you're talking to and in you know being able to have that conversation with the, per the young people um if your child is using an app or a site don't agree with them talk about it with them but listen to the reasons why they want to use it. So yeah, if a young person says, I don't know, for example, if they, they don't have an Instagram account and, and would like that, it's kind of talking to them about the, you know, 
the negatives and listening to reasons why, not just instantly saying no to it. So I think and having that be, open conversation again. I, I was going to say it might be that you know if it's something that you feel that they when they're a little bit older, then it's about having that conversation, isn't it? Yeah, and, and I think that links it, back as well. Yeah, I think it links back as well as kind of educating yourself about the apps and things, you know, having that understanding. Some apps are very appropriate. They have good privacy and security settings to protect people and young people. So, you know, it's not always a negative thing. So, yeah, being open and honest and educating yourself about the apps is, you know, quite key. And I think that I know a lot of parents that I've worked with who will allow young people to have social media accounts on the on the understanding that they have access to the passwords and they're yeah. you know able to kind of view everything that happens in you know anything that might be untoward is kind of yeah spotted or some although as i was doing my research um we know that a lot of young people will then set up a separate account yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, no i have first you know, yeah um yeah. Yeah, experienced that with um young people from the past yeah having that kind of dummy account that the parents don't actually know about but yeah um yeah so you could come up with a list of things that are okay for children of different ages so that you're part of the decision making i think that's what you touched on there it could be age related and yeah just yeah. having that conversation and you know saying that it's not a no for forever but at the moment it, it's not great and actually a lot of young people will respond to that kind of reasoning and that logic and, and understand why you might, you might get a tantrum at first when you get the no but yeah I think it's an easier way to kind of yeah accept that sometimes um so some of the useful resources that we've got here what we've got so yeah um nspcc um really they've got lots of really useful resources about keeping children safe online so again it's a lot about educating yourself and accessing these different resources um, um really zip zip it is apparently one for if you are asked to send you know an yeah. appropriate picture of yourself yeah um zip it has sort of funny images that you can send instead okay Oh, I haven't heard of that one. I'm going to have to research that myself. Yeah, later, no, I was so, researching yeah. it. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that sounds really interesting. Um, but yeah, again, it's, it's a lot of it about um, kind of online stuff and different things that you can access as well. So um, if you do really have some kind of concerns about young people online being groomed and things, then yeah, there's different services like National Crime Agency, that kind of thing, which would be supportive of that, I believe, Ruth, is that right? Yeah, CEOPS is yeah. Um, the one, if you um, think your child is being groomed or sexually abused online, then CEOPS is the one, I think it's on yeah. the next um, oh, I think slide. it's there on that one, is it? No, that's it. You can, yeah. There should have been another slide with um, resources on. I, oh, there, yeah, it's on the yeah. end. Ah, there we go. The slides have mixed themselves up a little oh, bit. Well. So ah, we'll go yeah. here. So yeah, other useful resources. So we've got Young Minds, um, NSPCC, internetmatters.org. Yeah. So did you yeah, want to talk Young about Minds, some of these, Ruth? Young Minds has got a really good um, section for young people about keeping safe, but also uh, one for parents as well. Yeah. Directs them to all the different um, places they can go for support cool and the nspcc does as well yeah I, I nspcc always have really good resources in terms of that kind of stuff yeah so yeah again, that's one i would recommend as well that's one i've used in the past for yeah kind of and teaching C young people C about Ops online has, safety sorry ben seops has um or used to have lots of little videos yeah sort of like for young people who think they're being exploited yeah yeah, there's, and I think that's the key. I think there is lots of stuff out there for parents to kind of look at and investigate. I mean, these things are really at the end of a Google search sometimes and just exploring it. So, yeah, the information's out there and there's lots of really proactive things to help educate young people and adults and parents about different things that can be going on. Um, so, yeah, was there any others that you wanted to kind of talk about, Ruth? I'm just conscious we've got about five minutes left now. Yeah, so. I'm just having a look to see if, see if there's anything else we haven't yeah. covered. Um, oh, one of the interesting things I, I came across was, yeah. um, which taught me a new word, which I was telling you about earlier. Oh, yeah. Um, was um, <laughs> sharenting. Yeah, so, sharenting. Yeah. So this mm. is where 
parents share their children's lives, their whole lives on yeah. the screen, and almost like create a brand. Um, yeah. And and what I was reading about, because I've not really come across this before, but what I was reading about was that it almost it, it's very difficult for the for the child because they have this kind of online persona. Yeah. Which either they they kind of want to try and live up to or they very definitely don't want to and it mm. kind of creates this tension and i think yeah the, you know yeah that's a really difficult thing for i think a lot of young people that kind of pressure of their online persona in in kind of the real life one it's such a contrast and i think parents yeah can overshare a little bit too much sometimes about their their young people you know it's it's almost yeah. forced upon them sometimes i guess um, I just want to say there's lots of good resources with Bernardo's as well. That's another one that um, has lots of good online resources and, and things. So that's worth exploring as well. Um, so um, just before we kind of leave the last few minutes open to any questions, um, we'll just let us know what we'll talk about what next week's involving. So um, next week's virtual parent hub, the topic is going to be mindfulness and relaxation. So we'll be talking a lot about kind of different mindfulness techniques um, and relaxation, things that you can do with young people and the benefits of that. So again, that will be next week, Monday, the 13th of July. So, yeah, 4 p.m. on Facebook Live. Um, I'm just going to stop sharing this for a minute. I can't. OK. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have any I questions? Don't think so, but let me just double check my phone and I'll see if uh, Laura's messaged me with any questions. But um, I don't think we have. Well, perhaps while we're waiting, Ben, I, yeah. I did have some little things here about signs of addiction to social media. OK, well, uh, I've just been so, told we've got no questions, so we've got time okay. to cover this, Ruth. So, yeah, that's a so, good little filler there. Yeah, yeah so one of the, um, constantly checking feeds you know yeah. so waking up first thing you do um taking your phone to bed yeah so actually affecting your sleep loss of interest in other activities mm. um oversharing information and kind of kind of living everything through your photos yeah. for like not being able to enjoy a meal because you're thinking about the best photo of it you know that yeah <laughs> going to a concert i think it's one of my bugbears like, we see too many people yeah yeah um, i think that's yeah. what it yeah actually yeah is it, people at concerts filming it constantly like, for the whole I concert know. i'm like yeah, just watch it it's yeah. exactly <laughs> yeah. but that's my personal view anyway so <laughs> yeah but get... that you know that sort of idea that you kind of unless you've unless your phone is involved in yeah it, you're kind of somehow you missed out on something another one is about jealousy of Definitely. other people's perfect lives so i think mm. we all know don't we that people present a certain yeah. image online which often is not backed up in reality but young people can have that kind of jealousy and envy of other people's lives and yeah. need to understand that actually it's it's like airbrushing it's exactly it's not yeah real yeah it's not a fair representation of really probably what's going on for that person themselves as well so yeah. you know yeah what you see online isn't always yeah, a fair reflection of actually the reality and yeah i think this yeah they call they call it flexing so if you have like the more yeah the flexing. more what yeah the richer in the in the kind of more more successful you appear online it's kind of yeah but the actual reality of it is you're probably not yeah so that's called flexing is that well, yeah, if you're, yeah, you're just showing off all your, your wealth and your goods and your, yeah, so that's, it does, yeah. It does backfire sometimes, Ben, because I, you've seen sort of um, news reports of, of young people who've kind of committed a lot of crime and then show pictures of themselves like, way yeah. <laughs> which, yeah, I mean, it's good because they get So a top tip for takeaway today, if you, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> no i say it's good because they get caught and, and yeah, the other no, <laughs> is a kind of preoccupation with popularity so yeah. like you post something and then it's like waiting for those likes to come in yeah so that you, the only way you're validated is through people ticking yeah. that 
box. Yeah, and it is like, a, yeah, that is kind of like addiction patterns, isn't it? You get addicted to that kind of the positive feeling of the positive, re, you know, feedback from it. So, yeah, it does have that same effect. You get your kind of your natural high from, you know, having that that positive feedback. And I, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. So when other, when you're I think young people, when their posts aren't getting as many likes as they want, then it, you know, it's, yeah, it causes them them worry. It's... Well, I think sometimes they'll kind of ramp it up then, won't they? So like if a girl posts a picture of us or a boy posts a picture of themselves, yeah, um, they might want to then kind of make it more, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, go the next step. Go the next step. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm trying to say. Definitely. Yeah. And I think as well, because I think, you know, what we're talking about is obviously advice for parents. So mm. I think the best advice, I think, is to is to really make sure that you have a life outside of social media. Yeah. So get outside, get your young person kind of away from their phone and out and doing stuff yeah definitely and i think I yeah it's but... it is really hard especially at the moment it's hard yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i think yeah i think it's as well it's just it's it's educating yourself as parents as well to kind of understand what what young people are engaging in and what they're using um in in also recognizing that although there are a lot of dangers with being online and social media actually for young people it's massively important to their well-being mm -hmm. and being able to communicate with their peers which we all know is so massively important to yeah. have that support of friends around you and actually for young people a mobile phone is this the only way they do that so you know it's, it's being aware of the the kind of necessity and the importance of that connection and also just being aware of how to stay safe while doing it I think I guess it's having a healthy balance isn't it having yeah. a healthy online life balance with a healthy offline life exactly yeah yes. definitely That's the best, best thing isn't it yeah um so i think we well we've gone for half an hour ruth and um, we've had no okay. questions so um i guess we'll wrap it up here for for this week um and again next week it's yeah mindfulness and relaxation at four o'clock same place but yeah you can always watch these back and watch back the old um, virtual hub sessions so yeah. yeah so it's us again next week ruth so i will okay. yeah yeah i guess that's it for today then all right lovely thanks em ruth and okay. thanks for anyone Thank who's you, watched cheers thank you okay. bye, bye.